how do the shocks on the wing sprint cars really affect what's going on behind the scenes? Well, you're going to find out that and more right after this. <laughs> What's up everybody, Thomas Brandon here. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and please do me a favor, if you like this video, hit that like button. Also make sure to subscribe and really quick, if you would like to join me, I live stream every Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch, link down in the description below. And we do wing sprints, midgets, non-wing sprints, late models, a bunch of different stuff. So uh, come check it out if you want to, it's a lot of fun. But anyways, so what are we looking at today? Well, we are looking at shocks and we are looking at them on the Wing 360 at Charlotte, and we're looking at them in Motec. That's right. We're going to actually see the physics behind the shocks and what's going on. Now, the first thing that we need to cover before we dive into the actual shocks is what is a shock? Because this is actually, believe it or not, it greatly misunderstood by the vast majority of people. A shock is nothing more than than a controlling device. It's a timing device, if you really want to think about it that way. That would probably be the best way to describe it. It is a timing device. So a lot of people, including myself, I've talked about it before too. When I talk about stiff shocks, right, the, the force that it takes to compress and stuff like that. The thing is, is that a shock doesn't create force, okay? And this is something that I'm trying to be better at in terms of my, my, uh, I speak when I when I'm talking about this stuff because for me it's second language. I spent so many years doing it, but for a lot of people they misunderstand. And so when I start talking about the force that it takes on stuff like this, in my mind I know that more force means it's slower, less force means it's faster. Where most people get confused. So take force out of it. We don't even need to think about force. The best way to think about a shock is the speed. Okay. So the higher the number in terms of bump and rebound on the valving the slower the shock, the slower the movement, okay? So if you have a six on the bump, that is the slowest shock in terms of the compression. If you have a nine on the rebound, that is the slowest shock in terms of the extension or rebound, all right? Then we have a three. A three would be the fastest. So that means that you've got a shock that's going to be moving in and out. If you had a three on the bump, it would collapse really, really fast. It's going to transfer the weight to that corner really fast. If you have a three on the rebound, that means that that shock's going to extend, right? Or transfer, let's say if you have a three on the on both front shocks on the rebound, it's going to let that weight transfer to the rear really fast. Now, here's the thing that most people get wrong when it comes to shocks, okay? Remember, like I said, it's a timing device. So transferring the weight from the front to the rear is great. That's what we need to propel the car forward. But there is a way to do it that will maximize the grip in the car. Meaning, just because you transfer it from the front to the rear as fast as possible does not mean you're going to have the greatest drive. You want that weight transfer to be smooth. You want it to match your throttle input. You see, if you just smash on the throttle and you've got easy up shocks on the front and that weight just immediately transfers to the back, well, guess what? Now you've transferred all your weight to the back, which you need weight or force to create grip or traction, right? And if you transfer all that weight to the back and let's say you're on a slick track and you break the tires loose, guess what? Now you've completely used up all your grip. You're going to have to roll out of the throttle to get the tires to hook back up and this is going to cost you time. Now, if you had had maybe some stiffer rebounds up front, and so as you smash the throttle, let's say you're horrible with throttle control, as you smash the throttle, that weight transfers slower. Now that grip builds up and you are propelling the car forward as opposed to just immediately breaking the tires loose. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that's one way of looking at it. All right. Remember, bars create or springs when we talk about other cars like late models, but we're talking about sprint cars and a bar, a torsion bar is nothing but a glorified spring. It's just a fancy spring, okay? A spring 
you know, compresses and, and extends. A bar twists and untwists. It's that untwisting that provides the spring-like effect, all right? So the bars will create the action. The shocks control it, all right? So when we are looking at our shock on, on these cars, right, we want to be really thinking about how and when do I want that weight to transfer? Because that's really, really important. All right. It's really important. And there's a lot of people out there that have issues and it's for very simple reasons. Okay. I see so many people who run these setups where they've got the front bars all the way up the rear. You know, they got 1050s up front. They've got the torsion bars all the way up. They've got six, three shocks up front. And then in the rear, they've got 950s. The car slammed down. Okay. And then they've got like a three, nine shock and like a, like a, a four seven or something on the right rear they've got the rear tied down okay well that's great if we were in a drag race okay but when it comes to cornering what you've done is you've taken your sprint car and you've turned it into a snow plow okay that's all your that's all you've done so now when you go into the corner all right and you try to turn and you're sitting there sawing on the wheel and it won't turn won't turn then all of a sudden you get grip and then the car snaps and you fall off the cushion right the car darts all over the place and a lot of that has to do with the fact that you're not setting this thing up correctly okay you're going to the extremes with stuff all right just because you saw you know uh, I don't know name your pro just because you saw you know Semmelman or Bergeron or Edens or you know name your pro have some setup where they had you know you know, six threes up front doesn't mean you have to do that to be fast because you don't, you really don't. And I've got the data right here to prove it. So let's take a look at this data. All right. So we've got up the data. Now, the thing that you need to know is, is everything on these setups is the same. The only thing that I changed was the shocks. Okay. So the baseline, which is these, these colored lines, those have six, three shocks on both the right and left front, a straight five shock on the right rear, and then a three, nine shock on the left rear. Okay. The, uh, other test that I did has a five, four shock on the right front, a four, five shock on the left front, a straight five shock on the right rear, and then a four, six shock on the left rear. Okay. That's the difference. Now, when we look at these tests. I did two laps around the top and two laps around the bottom. First two laps were around the top. Um, if we zoom in on those, yes, those are the ones I've got. If I look at just those first two laps around the top, okay, you can see that overall, right, we're pretty similar. Not identical, but pretty similar. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when we look at our traction numbers on the rear around the top, the package that um, I'm the my my you know the package number two right that's got the five four and the four five up front, we do have a little less traction on the rear, 0 0.01. Okay, so what that is from is when we are full throttle around the track because I was full throttle around the track for the top and the bottom. What's happening is, is we're getting that weight transferring to the rear faster. And it's just basically staying there because we've got those easy up shocks in the front. And so it's basically just staying there. And since we're just going around the top, pretty much just keeping the car straight, that weight's going back and it's staying there. And so we're hooked up in the track, the traction just there. Okay. If we look at the weight transfer, you can see that on the left rear, we have 519. And then on the right rear, we had 466. All right. Now, with the other package, package two, which is the ones with the different shocks, we, on the weight, we had 510 on the left rear and 460 on the right rear. So we don't have as much weight back there. All right. Now, our lap times were basically the same around the top. They're I, pretty much identical. All right. A couple hundreds, give or take, here or there per lap. All right. But they're basically the same. Now, when we go to the bottom, that's where we have a little bit of a different story because of this different shock package. It allows me with my driving style to run the bottom line much better and smoother. And this has actually helped our lap times. Also, because of this, we have identical traction numbers, basically. Okay. And keep in mind, we're still wide open. 
all right? The line that I'm running is kind of a, you know, swooping down onto the bottom and then coming out, right? So that's the line that we're running. And if we look at the weight transfer, once again, you can see that it's pretty much the same, all right? Few pounds difference. Now, keep in mind, one thing you might want to notice here is that the weight on the uh, right rear, and I'm pointing to my left side for some reason, the weight on the right rear with the Easy Up Shocks package number one is less than the weight on the right rear with package number two. Now, how can that be? Well, that is because of the weight transfer that's happening, not front to rear, but left to right. So as we go onto the bottom, yes, that wing is holding us over, but as that force starts to level out the car some, I don't have the left rear tied down as much. This is giving me more right rear drive as I come out the corner. This allows me with the right rear drive to make a tighter radius around the corner without having to let off or scrub speed. So that's what the shocks do. That's why shocks are so important when we look at cornering speed. And sprint car racing is all about cornering speed. The faster that you can get through the corners, the better. And if you have a shock package that allows the car to go in and get set and basically stay that way and just phoom, go around, as opposed to one that's like, you know, yes, it's on the rear, but now when you try to turn it, right, it doesn't want to turn as tight because the front is up more. You're not getting that weight transfer to the front to get that suspension to turn better. Now you see where you can scrub off some speed. Now, when we look at the average lap times, okay, I did a little bit of math here, and the Package one, my average lap time over the four laps was 13.5, call it 13.57, all right? With package two, it was 13.54. Now, that's only three hundredths of a second, but over the course of four laps, you're looking at a tenth, right? That's over a tenth in four laps. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you can save a tenth, over four laps in terms of just being more consistent because the setup fits your driving style more, you are going to be much, much faster. Think about that over the course of 30 laps. If we actually did 0 0.03 times 30, right? It'd be almost a full second, all right? If we round it up to point or to three hundredths of a second, it'd be almost a full second that you would be saving over the course of 30 laps. Now, keep in mind, this is a fresh track where you are wide open. When you get to a slick track and you're on and off the throttle and consistency far outweighs just, you know, hammering down the throttle, how much do you think that you can save then when you have a setup that is comfortable and built for you? It could be way more than just nine tenths, way more. So that's what shocks can do. Also, like I said, this is all predicated on driving style. Always set the car up to what fits you. Doesn't matter what anybody else does, what fits you. Do that and you'll see the greatest results, all right? So that's gonna do it all for this video. Now, really quick, do me a favor, like I said before, if you like this, please hit that like button. Also make sure to subscribe. And if you've got anything else that you wanna see me test, put it down in the comments below. I've got the late model stuff coming. I got the workbook done. I'll have late model videos coming. Um, the data that I've been looking at is pretty crazy. It's actually pretty awesome. There's a bunch of stuff that I went through and um, you're gonna be pretty surprised at the stuff that you see. So I'll have that out this week. But other than that, if there's anything else you wanna see, just put it down in the comments below. And then finally, if you wanna actually come over and get setups for free, be a part of what I think is the best and is definitely the fastest growing online sim racing community there is head over to the school of sim racing on our private facebook group you can also make sure to join our discord group because that's really where all the action happens is in our discord group we've got over a thousand people in there now and it's a very active community everybody's in there helping each other it's a ton of fun a lot of great people in there so if you want to check that stuff out i'll have links down in the description below for everything but that'll do it as always thank you very much until next time i want to wish you good luck good racing take care